My name is Raoul Cully. I'm a comedian from the northeast of England. Whenever I gig down south, I'm often told, Well, I don't get you, mate. I mean, you look like an ethnic, but you sound like a racist. Oh, worse. Oh my god, you're an ethnic minority from Newcastle. That must have been so hard for you, growing up with all the gammons. Gammons? As in like, all white people with red faces who look like the pork? You mean like, my grandparents, Joyce and John Astley, one of whom fought the Nazis in World War II, the other of whom built the tanks with which we fought the Nazis in World War II, and both of whom, for no apparent reason other than the kindness in their hearts, decided to adopt three Indian grandchildren in the mid-80s sometime? Okay, yeah, like, I'm sure, Raoul, well, the part of Newcastle you're from isn't racist, because you're a bit more educated, a bit more, well, like, us, but, you know, the surrounding areas, they're pretty racist, aren't they? Like, like South Shields, I think that's very racist. You mean like South Shields, which is home to one of Britain's very first Curry Miles? You mean the same South Shields, which is home to the mosque where Muhammad Ali and his wife renewed their vows? You mean the same South Shields, which saw the first wave of modern mass migration in the form of your many shipbuilders in the 1890s, who were famously welcomed with open arms because they brought the kebab. As in the same South Shields that was founded in AD 160 and originally called Arbea, which literally translates as Fort of the Arab Troops. Aye, that's right. The very first people that settled South Shields and civilised it looked more like me than ye! Look, okay, yeah, Raoul, maybe, maybe the North East has some multicultural connections dating back thousands of years, like all of Roman Britain, but I mean, hey, you guys voted 49% in favour of Brexit. I don't think you can really be described as, you know, anti-racist. The city of Newcastle-upon-Tyne, in my personal view, is probably the most anti-racist place in all of Western Europe. Firstly, while Bristol have had a statue of a slave trader up for 20 years, we had a statue of Earl Grey. He's still up there at Monument today. On top of being the Prime Minister that was responsible for giving common working white men the vote, he's also the Prime Minister who passed the Slavery Abolition Act in 1833, making slavery illegal throughout the entirety of the British Empire. And don't take it from me, ladies and gentlemen, I've obviously got bias. Take it from the abolitionists themselves. William Wells Brown was a runaway slave and abolitionist who was instrumental in spreading the gospel of abolition and helping end transatlantic slavery in America. And he wrote word for word that in the United Kingdom, there are no warmer and kinder friends to the abolition movement than the city of Newcastle upon Tyne. And the mad thing is, ladies and gentlemen, the kindness shown to William Wells Brown when he was here and the abolishing of slavery in the British Empire isn't even Newcastle's biggest contribution to the cause. The biggest contribution Newcastle made to the anti-slavery movement comes in the shape of one Frederick Douglass. For those who don't know, Frederick Douglass was the most photographed man in the 19th century. Alongside Abraham Lincoln, he was probably one of the most important figures in the ending of transatlantic slavery. Frederick Douglass's contribution to freedom and democracy in both America and the world is so important that near enough every city in America has a Frederick Douglass street. On top of that, Kamala Harris, the Vice President of the United States, right this very minute, has a bust of Frederick Douglass and a quote of his in her office. But Frederick Douglass was not always the revolutionary abolitionist we now know him as today. Frederick Douglass originally started life like so many African Americans of his time as a slave in Talbot County, Maryland. Before he ever even had the idea that he may be able to end slavery altogether, his only dream, his only idea was to end slavery for himself and become a free man. When he did become a free man, he described it as the highest excitement he had ever felt in his life. And where did old Frederick Douglass find his freedom? You guessed it, the city of Newcastle upon time! See, when Frederick ran away originally from his farm, 
he was still technically speaking a slave and he could be caught at any point by slave catchers and returned to his farm. So he escaped to Europe still as a slave to do speeches on abolition. And when he came to Newcastle, he delivered a rousing, inspiring speech to a sold out crowd in, of all places, the big market. Not quite filthy McNasties, but around the same area. And not quite blue bamboo if you're of a certain age, but literally in that square, that's where the man gave his speech. And his speech was so inspiring that a pair of sisters, Anna and Emma Richardson, organised the whip round. Aye, a bloody whip round. One of the greatest pieces of North East history started with a bleeding bucket. Frederick went back to the United States of America a free man, unworried about being captured and returned to a farm where he would live the rest of his life as a slave. He went on to do several more speeches around the United States and had one-on-one -on -one meetings with Abraham Lincoln that ultimately convinced Abraham to start the Civil War and eventually win the Civil War, which led to the demise and destruction of slavery. And none of it perhaps could have been possible without the city of Newcastle upon time. Frederick was so enamored by the warmth he was shown in Newcastle that he wrote in his third autobiography that he will never ever forget the unbounded kindness and warmth of our friends in the north. So the next time some Southron tries to tell you that Newcastle is an inherently racist city, you sit them down and say, I'm sorry, but long before Martin Luther King did a speech at Newcastle University and was awarded an honorary doctorate when every single other UK university rejected him as a troublemaker and rabble rouser, long before the city centre of Newcastle elected as its MP a female black engineer, long before we produced a Radio 1 breakfast host of mixed race Nigerian heritage, Long before we had the African Geordie asking the people of Stockton if they think they could chin him. Long before the Gucci headband wearing wizard hypnotised us all with his feet and his tweets. And long before the Newcastle Brown Mail discovered a topic on Wikipedia that made him decide to chronicle the entire Northeast history in an hour comedy show this Friday. Back when Southerners were sending out boats to oppress, enslave and conquer, we had the Richardson City. We had Frederick Douglass and we had the famous Geordie Whitround. So maybe my grandparents didn't adopt me for no particular reason. Maybe my grandparents adopted me because they were continuing a long tradition in Geordie land, perhaps started by their grandparents, of emancipating, educating and uplifting black and brown voices. Ladies and gentlemen, a short history of Newcastle upon time is this Friday at 6.30pm UK time. You can buy your tickets at the Now website. The link is in the comments. Thank you for watching. Guys, thanks for watching the video, as well as being a trailer for my upcoming show, a Short History of Newcastle upon time. It's also a prototype for a full 10 episode documentary I want to do called Geordie Law, but I kind of need money and time to do it. I've been doing a lot of watching YouTube videos, I've been researching, reading books and academic documents. There's so much to go through. The human history of Newcastle spans about 32,000 years, and that's a lot of books and research to go through. So if you'd like to donate my Patreon, whatever you can afford, maybe a one time donation from my Kofi page, that'd be really appreciated. You'd be contributing to more videos like this, and hopefully I can get the 10 part series out there. Because Frederick Earl Grey, Muhammad Ali's trip here, they deserve a lot longer than six minutes and they deserve a lot longer than the 60 minutes they're gonna get on friday they deserve a, a full hour each if you ask me and i'd like to make this but it takes time and it takes money yo money uh, alternatively you don't invest in me fair enough but i would say invest in your own children uh now flix is getting set up soon it's gonna have loads of stuff like this on uh, and the felt now cooperative that i'm part of i really think is the best hope for kids doing stand-up from the Northeast in the future. Uh, really, I, I cannot tell you how much these guys are, are going to revolutionize comedy in the Northeast. So please, maybe think about investing in them or invest in me. Either way, uh, thank you very kindly for watching. Uh, as I say, please invest. And let's make Tyneside proud again.